United States Army Rangers are one of the most capable and lethal fighting forces in the entire world. As the Army's premier direct action raid force, there's a reason why almost everyone has heard of their motto, Rangers lead the way. But what if we told you that within the highly renowned 75th Ranger Regiment lies a mysterious, secretive unit that executes some of the world's most covert operations? That would be the Regimental Reconnaissance Company, the Army Rangers Tier 1 unit. That's right, the 75th Ranger Regiment has a Tier 1 unit that matches up with the likes of Delta Force and SEAL Team 6. But why do the Rangers have a Tier 1 unit? What are the differences between a Tier 2 Ranger and a Tier 1 Ranger? And what do both bring to the table in the world of Soth? We're going to answer all those questions for you, and much more. Buckle up, this is Rangers vs. RRC. Before we dive into the differences between the Army Rangers and the RRC, let's make some things clear. First, while the RRC is a part of the 75th Ranger Regiment, specifically in the Special Troops Battalion, for purposes of this video, we will be referring to them like they're two separate entities. Secondly, outside of Tier 1 units, military units don't really refer to themselves by their numbered tier. You don't see the 75th Ranger Regiment referring to themselves as a Tier 2 unit, and you probably won't see the RRC refer to themselves as a Tier 1 unit either. The tier system is generally an unsaid or unwritten way of organizing or marginalizing military units. In a nutshell, the Tier 2 and Tier 1 terms are more for simplicity's sake. The Army Rangers and RRC are more accurately represented by their respective missions, purpose, and funding. A U.S. Army Ranger is someone who has been put to the test both as a soldier and as a person. They're the tip of the spear, having undergone a strict selection process in order to have the honor of being a ranger. While there's a multitude of MOSs that are in the regiment, those that are combat-oriented, such as an 11 Bravo Ranger, have extensive combat training and experience to make them some of America's finest warriors on the battlefield. A ranger in the RRC takes things a step further. Not only are they everything a ranger is, but they're uniquely trained to operate in some of the world's most secretive, high-stakes missions. A very very demanding environment indeed. With a selection process modeled after other Tier 1 units, they are built to execute the toughest missions out there with confidence, professionalism, and valor. But we're just scratching the surface. What are the missions of these two elite forces? The Army Rangers are a lethal, agile, and flexible fighting force, capable of conducting many complex Joint Special Operations missions. They focus on three types of missions, Special Operations Raids, Forcible Entry Operations, and Special Reconnaissance. Special Operations Raids are designed to cease, destroy, or capture enemy goods and locations while delivering maximum surprise and shock. Forcible Entry Operations can include things such as taking over airfields, and special reconnaissance is essentially gathering intel on the enemy. Rangers have an emphasis on small unit tactics and deploy often, but for shorter durations than conventional units because their op tempo is so high. RRC, on the other hand, mainly does what is in its name, reconnaissance. While that might not seem like much on the surface, don't get it twisted. For starters, this isn't your typical recon. The missions they conduct are highly classified. You won't be reading about them in your local newspaper. RRC operators are often tasked with performing reconnaissance for the other Tier 1 units in JSOC, which requires a higher level of intel, analysis, and proficiency to ensure that ops run smoothly. They can be required to travel long, and we mean long, distances, with upwards of 100 pounds of gear in order to accomplish mission needs. While RRC operators still conduct raids, forcible entry ops, and other facets of soft that you'd expect from a tier 1 unit, you could say they're less of a brute fighting force like the rangers are. While both forces are methodical in what they do, an RRC operator is going to have some different skills and training under their belt compared to a ranger in a ranger battalion. This is where you'll see the big distinction between a tier 1 operator and a tier 2 operator. What do we mean by that? Well, an RRC operator is almost certain to be an Army Ranger who has years and years of experience in the regiment, with several deployments under their belt. They've excelled as a Ranger, and were handpicked based on their individual traits, leadership skills, and their ability to stand out amongst their peers. That's not to say an Army Ranger isn't also seasoned and experienced. There's plenty of Rangers who serve their time without going for RRC and still are the best of the best. But with different missions come different skills. Again, virtually every RRC operator is a Ranger. 
Rangers can receive training in service shooters, snipers, medics, breachers, combat divers, you get the deal. The training at RRC turns things up a notch and turns the RRC operator into a jack of all trades, where they can learn interrogation techniques, surveillance, computer hacking, demolition, and whatever else JSOC might need from them at any given moment in time. That begs the question. What does an RRC member go through to actually join this highly elite and secretive unit? In order to give you the full picture, we gotta go over what it takes to become an Army Ranger first. The Army Ranger pipeline is a bit shorter than most soft forces pipelines. In fact, they're pretty much the only soft force that can train you up to speed and send you to the battlefield within a year of starting basic training. But don't think that the pipeline is easy just because you can go downrange a bit faster than other soft communities. To get into the 75th Ranger Regiment, you gotta pass two main courses. Courses. First up, you can attend RASP 1 or RASP 2, which is dependent on your pay grade. RASP is the filter the regiment uses to weed out those who don't make the cut or don't want to be there. Upon completion, you'll get the Tan Beret and the Ranger Scroll. Keep in mind, over half of those who try out don't make it past RASP. Next, you also gotta pass Ranger School, where you get the highly renowned Ranger Tab. Not every soldier who gets the Ranger Tab is a Ranger, but every Ranger gets the Ranger Tab. Now what about RRC? While RRC does accept people from other communities, for the purpose of this video, we're going to be assuming the individual is already an Army Ranger. First, a prospective RRC operator will have to serve as a Ranger for quite some time and earn their salt in the community like we mentioned before. Then, they'll have to apply for RRC selection and be greenlit to try out. RRC candidates will go through a two-week long initial selection in an undisclosed area, where they will do long distance, advanced land navigation while rucking with around 60 to 70 pounds of weight. Even though everyone who attends this course is in great shape, it still proves to be very challenging. Each day they can easily expect to cover over 12 to 18 miles in mountainous terrain, as well as conducting some fast-paced ruck marches. To top that all off, there's an event where they must ruck roughly 30 to 40 miles, but the actual distance is never disclosed. And if that wasn't enough, they go through a series of psychological evals, interviews, and must pass a review board to move on to the next portion of training. Yeah, that's just phase one. Phase two is going through and completing the 29 week recon training course. Here, candidates will learn the skills they will use to operate as JSOC's reconnaissance asset. Candidates will build the foundations of an RRC operator by learning skills such as military freefall, advanced communications, digital photography, computers, photo editing, field craft and stocks, infiltration and exfiltration methods, close air support, advanced driving techniques, demolitions, advanced medical techniques, and tactical man tracking. Tier 1 or Tier 2, Ranger or not, at the end of the day, Army Rangers and RRC operators are invaluable assets to the world of special operations. While an RRC operator might receive more in-depth training in certain areas, don't walk away from this video thinking that an RRC operator is automatically better or more badass than an Army Ranger. Both go above and beyond for our country and are a force to be reckoned with. Rangers lead the way. Interested in becoming a Ranger? Are you trying to get an Option 40 contract? If so, you're gonna need some good gear to help you along the way. Consider getting some gear over at ATAC Fitness, a veteran-owned company dedicated to giving you the best quality gear at an affordable price. If you use our code General Discharge at checkout, you help support the channel, and you get an extra 10% off your order. The link to their website is in the description below. On top of that amazing deal, don't forget about the other badass parts of Army Soft. While Rangers are great, there's more than just them. We did a video covering other communities in Army Soft. The link to this video will be in the description below. Well, that is the down and dirty of Rangers vs RRC. If you learned something from this video, make sure to give us a like and subscribe to our channel. As always, thank you for watching. Do you even want to be here? A big shout out to all of our YouTube members and our patrons over at our Patreon. Thank you all so much for taking the extra step in supporting our channel. It is much appreciated. If you'd like to be featured on a general discharge video, consider joining our membership with the link in the description or the join button to the left of the subscribe button or go give our Patreon a look and join the team. Here's Nick Nausea. All your friends are subscribing to General Discharge and you don't even want to be here.